Welcome back. We bring you breaking news from OpenAI's live event. You saw a shot just moments ago. Steve Kovac has the story and the details. Steve? Hey there, Kelly. Yeah, a couple headlines coming out of this event. The first one is a new version of ChatGPT4. That's their latest and greatest model. It's going to be called GPT-4 O, not zero, but the letter O. And that stands for Omni Model, meaning it's able to uh, take in data, uh, not just text, like we're probably used to talking at ChatGPT, but this model is capable of processing images and voice as well. So you can literally have kind of a conversation with it. They're showing a demo uh, just a few minutes ago where you can even interrupt ChatGPT if it's giving an answer maybe you don't like or you want to go off on a tangent or something like that with them. Um, so much more conversational and ability to talk to uh, ChatGPT than before. That is the big headline here. And then just some minor things. Uh, there's going to be a desktop app for the first time. They showed a Mac version. I'm not sure. If, I imagine it's also going to be on Windows as well. And they redesigned the app um, as well. So it's just a sleeker look. Um, and right now, no Sam Altman appearing at this event, but it, was, it is being led by CTO. You see her there, CTO Mira Marathi. They're giving some demos of this new model, what it's capable of. On top of that, they just said um, 100 million uh, users of ChatGPT. That's, that's a big number there. And then also, uh, this new model is going to have an API, which means developers can make use of it and make their own apps using this new model and have that uh, more natural conversation as part of their own third-party apps, Kelly. I don't know why I chuckle to look at the way that they're doing the event because it, it is it feels different. It feels yeah. like it's supposed to be more casual somehow. Certainly the opposite of the Apple infamous it's AI like ad that. from last week and the whole vibe. That's why I joked it almost felt like some kind of show that we were we were watching. Um, like. Uh, a bunch of friends sitting around on a couch and chit-chatting. That's exactly right. And I, I th I'm almost positive that's um, OpenAI's headquarters out in San Francisco in the, in the Mission neighborhood. It, at least it looks like it to me. I've been inside there before. Um, and so, yeah, it is more intimate. I believe there's no press there. It sounded like a lot of cheering and clapping. Uh, it sounds like it's just full of OpenAI employees watching this event. This is a virtual event only, so I'm not even sure if they invited any press or analysts. I wouldn't compare this to, you know, what Google is going to do tomorrow at I.O. or, of course, one of those flashy Apple events. This is much much more subdued. And frankly, it's not a huge, huge announcement, but it is uh, OpenAI getting ahead of these developers' conferences. We're expecting similar announcements to what I just told you about this new model, uh, GPT-4.0. We're expecting something similar tomorrow from Google as well. So this is kind of front-running that. Steve, real quickly, they were obviously the first to kick off the whole category, at least by putting it in the public's hands. Are they still the, the leading edge of the technology? A lot of people see it that way, but I mean, you also have Anthropic, you have whatever Apple's going to do. But I will say it's, it's just thematically interesting that we're having this event today ahead of the developers' conferences of Google, ahead of Microsoft, and ahead of Apple next, uh, next month. Those three giants have had to reorient their entire businesses, Kelly, around artificial intelligence because of what this one startup has done. So yeah. it's really interesting to watch them kind of go first ahead of this uh, developer conference season where we're going to see all those three giants unleash their latest in AI. Indeed. Steve, thank you. For now, we appreciate you it. it, Steve Kovac.